Hey guys, what is up? Domino here. We're doing episode 37 of my Skyrim Dawn Guard playthrough. And I apologize again for the delay. I've been busy rendering and cutting the video. Getting it all nice and pretty like for my favorite viewers. You guys. But anywho, um, I'm rolling around as a vampire, rolling around as a in, in vampire form, and uh, we're, we're, we're going to check out this, this mistextured dragon, uh, one of the many bugs of uh, Skyrim, especially bugs I've been encountering, but uh, y you'll see it towards the end when he lands, um, his, his body texture is all muddy and just messed up, I, <laughs> definitely strange. Alright, now check this out. <laughs> In fact, it's almost like he's low polygon. His, his animations seem off and whatever. And then, boom. His textures come back in. Again, I don't know if that's just my game having a huge cache file or what, but I, I thought it was amusing. Anyway, like I said in the previous episode, this the skill that I'm using that sucks the life, the the red orb of death, um, is pretty amazing. It's like a area of effect, um, vampiric blast. So when you shoot this orb, anything caught in the in the in the blast, you're gonna suck the life from. And uh, later on in the playthrough, especially kind of towards the end. Um, you will see how useful this, this spell is uh, for crowd control. Like, if you've got a big crowd of enemies... And I got an arrow through my head. <laughs> Go Skyrim. At least it's not like Oblivion where the, area, the arrows stick into you for hours on end, it seems like. So you're running around like a, like a goofball with the arrows in you. But yeah, towards like I said, towards the end... Um, this skill becomes, you have to use it because there's some areas where you get hit, fight these waves of monsters and they, they get all they get all up in your zip code and you gotta take them all down all at once and but I don't, I don't have very much Skyrim news to talk about um, I, I have heard that they are coming out with another expansion kind of a smaller one called Hearthfire which seems to let you build your own house if you're into that sort of thing. Obviously, I'm going to be checking it out. I'm going to be getting it hopefully on day one <laughs> that it comes out for PC. And we'll take a look at it. And I'm going to make sure that I have videos of it coming up on day one when it comes out. Um, we're not, I'm not going to do this thing where I stockpile all this gameplay footage and then try and cut and render it later because that was just this is is just a way too much of a backlog and and I feel like I should explain a little bit um kind of what what the delay is about about this Skyrim stuff I have like I've said over and over again I have over nine hours in my Dawnguard playthrough literally from start to finish um I only turned the recording off for a few times in the uh, Soul Cairn, when I was just running around in circles and nothing was happening, um, I'm gonna get the whole thing uploaded to YouTube. That is my goal. It's gonna happen. Um, make no mistake about it. Um, however, I'm just rendering and cutting each episode as we go, and I'm gonna kind of not overload your guys' subscription boxes with it. Um, because I love you guys, uh, and I care about your <laughs> care about your convenience. So, what do we got here? Oh yes, this is the uh, this is the opium den or the the skooma den. <laughs> These fools is doing drugs down here, basically. Um, part of your part of your quest for the vampires uh, has you going into this. Uh, I, I want to call it like some kind of drug <laughs> drug den where all these dudes are uh, smoking up out here which I found kind of funny yeah if you talk to the dealer she'll give you a free sample of uh, I think skooma
Now I assume that if if they are underground and pretty much hidden under the ruins of a <laughs> of a dilapidated house, that this isn't exactly legal. Um, I know that when I played Morrowind, another game that I do want to I do want to hit at least a little bit at some point. Um, skooma is illegal. Same with the uh, Moon Sugar and the other the other one. I forget the other one. But basically, while I was playing this, um, I did not realize that the uh, that the vampirism has been changed in Dawnguard. And Dawnguard, when you're blood starved, you aren't setting people off. You don't. You don't. People don't go crazy anymore. So this was a cold playthrough. I didn't, you know, prepare or really read up on all the changes that Dawnguard made. So I just kind of jumped into it and figured it out as I went along, and. I realize, and I'm trying to find somebody to feed off of. I'm trying to feed off one of these drug, <laughs> drug addicted, uh, dudes because I'm afraid that I'm going to set these people off at any moment here, because uh, I haven't fed in a while. But it turns out that's not the case, which uh, which just goes to show that you should probably read something about the <laughs> about the game that you're playing. Um, yeah. I found it interesting that they have a wide variety of people in here. They have like a a, a soldier that deserted the uh, the Imperial Legion in here. They have uh, rich noblemen. They have a whole bunch of whole bunch of ne'er do wells over here just chilling. As you can see here, I've got the skeleton key still. Um, that's another tool that I am very reluctant to get rid of. I, <laughs> I absolutely love this thing. And uh, there is actually a quest in my quest log to go and do the final stages of that and turn it in and get rid of it forever. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm going to wait till my lock picking is like 100 first. If it isn't already. Anyway, this area was kind of cool. Um, it was kind of like a bandit vampire area. There are a lot of bandits in here. Um, I did not have any real trouble dispatching with them. And there is an area in here, and I'm going to try and point it out. I don't know if it's in this episode or the next one. There's an area in here that has a serious amount of loot. Like, we're talking money, jewels, just everything. And I realized in saying that, it doesn't really help because if you don't have an, a way to unload all this stuff, you're just you're basically stockpiling all this high value stuff that you can't get rid of. And uh, so one of my goals is I'm trying to get my speechcraft skill up to an appropriate level so that I can give everybody in the world more, or all the merchants in the world, more money to deal with. Because I am just having issue after issue of a full inventory, all this stuff I don't want to get rid of. I want to sell it and get the value of it, but it's just so slow selling to the Thieves Guild and uh, trying to find these merchants here and there with money. But mo money, mo problems. That's what I say. Now, if you're a vampire, a little little hint, little little domino hint here um, use your vampire sight I don't know if it's just my computer or what but I found some of these areas to be really really dark and it's hard to see um, vampire sight is really useful for looking in all those deep catacombs and not going blind so a big part of my playthrough is played using the night vision <laughs> so <laughs> I know it kind of sucks because it, it, it's kind of like detective mode in Batman Arkham City. Uh, you, you don't really get to see the beauty and all the, the splendoriferous lightning, uh, lighting in the game when you use it, but it just makes it so much easier.
Now, as you can see, uh, feeding off of the bodies is not a vampire skill. That's not something that's part of vampirism. Um, if you watched, if you've actually been one of the people that have been watching my playthrough, I believe that I got the Ring of Namira. I might have in one of my episodes where I get the Ring of Namira, uh, and I can feed off dead bodies. Um, there's a danger quest, and I don't know if I recorded it or not. I probably didn't. But you basically lead this guy, this poor hapless fool, into the lair of Namira, and she gives you a ring that lets you feed off dead bodies to give you regen and life. I've just kind of left the ring on. I found it pretty handy. Um, especially when you're uh, blood starved and you're not regenerating health. It's definitely, definitely handy to have. Unfortunately, it gives you an extra step to go through to get to looting people. So if you're looting off of a, a body, you have to actually click loot and, and don't click feed to do that. So it kind of slows you down in that regard, but whatever. You know, even with Fraps, I'm just really impressed with how well this game looks. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Dawnguard looks just absolutely great. I mean, it looks like the best areas of Skyrim. Um, Skyrim itself had some areas that looked kind of bleh, but they've really got the texturing and the lighting down. The frame rate is much more stable in the Dawnguard areas because it's clear that they kind of know that the Bethesda knows their craft and they know what they're doing now, so... It's not, not bad at all. I really dig it. Which kind of reminds me, uh, speaking of Bethesda, um, I, I did hear some kind of moaning and groaning from the PS3, some of my PS3 friends who are not getting the expansions because Bethesda is claiming that the PS3 hardware, due to it's kind of the way that it's set up, um, doesn't isn't able to handle the increasing uh, I guess memory size and requirements of adding additional content to the game from what I've read from what I've read of the uh, I think it's a Kotaku article Kotaku however you pronounce it well from what I've read from the article they have now enlisted the help of Sony Sony has given them uh, developers that are actually going to work with them to try and make it work. They still haven't said if they can get the PS3 to run all these mods and plugins. Um, quite frankly, if Sony themselves can't make the content run on their own system, then it's not going to look too good. But for all my PS3 guys and gals out there, I feel your pain, and I hope, I really hope that they, they get this sorted out uh, for you guys, because uh, Skyrim without the expansions is just no fun at all. Um, obviously, if you can afford it, um, I would suggest playing Skyrim on a PC. With the HD texture pack and all the anti-aliasing, I'm playing on max settings right now, it just looks great. This game is gorgeous, and it runs great um, on my computer. There are only a few areas um, that I get dropped down to like 35 frames per second, and that's in the uh, Thieves Guild Cistern. There's like one little area there, and I, I'm positive that's the game. Uh, for the rest of the game, I get solid 50 to 60 frames per second just running around. Um, not with fraps, obviously. So you're looking at this game in 30 30 frames per second. Uh, when you play, when I play without fraps, it's a solid 60. So fraps about divides my frame rate in half. So not a problem at all. I love the lighting. Everything's so really detailed and awesome. Um, if you can play this game in 1920 by 1080 with all the settings cranked up, I would suggest it. Um, definitely, definitely play this game on PC if you can. Here's another blank loading screen, uh, courtesy of <laughs> Bethesda. Way to go, guys. Um, I haven't played Skyrim in a while, so 
I don't know if this problem is still still a thing. I know that they haven't released any patches as of late, and I expect the next patch to be released alongside Hearthfire for the PC, which is no doubt going to be about a month from now, um, if Dawnguard was any indication of how that's going to play out. So basically the, the key to this uh, this bandit area, and I, I have a feeling that it's going to run about two episodes. This is one of the, the initial dungeons that you're going to go through. Um, the trick here is pretty much just don't see if you can use stealth if you can. Obviously for me, I'm not all that stealthy, even though I'm a lightly armored dude. Uh, my sneak skill is not all that great. but. Um, like in areas like this, if you want to use the vampire form, I would suggest it. However, just understand that in the vampire form, your only healing is really... Oh, and I just fell down a freaking pit. That sucks. Oh man, I'm dying. Yeah, I was, I was saying, the only way you can heal yourself in vampire form is by using the life-stealing... Uh, Ability. You can't use potions or whatever. So it, there have been there were there were a couple of instances in this playthrough where I was actually kind of vulnerable while I was in vampire form because if guys mob up on you and you can't get away from them, they'll take you down. So that's something to tell you. It every situation is different. If you can get away with uh, using vampire form uh, heavily, then go for it. I found that I was very selective with the areas that I wanted to use that form because um, you're pretty vulnerable. Now there were a couple areas there were a couple areas in this in this playthrough, not in this dungeon specifically, but in, in the Dawnguard playthrough that I did, where I found I had the most trouble and that was pretty much when I had a whole bunch of enemies on me all at the same time. In, in that case, I try to use the uh, summonable pets and uh, Kusith. And you'll see that I go, I go get my pet Kusith, uh, the demon dog, <laughs> pretty pretty soon here. Um, but I try to use these pets to run interference, you know, to get up up in there and distract everybody while I zip around and and try and backstab these fools. But I guess if I had to describe my playstyle, uh, based off like the standard classes, I would say I'm pretty much a, a roguish character, kind of a a straightforward, um, lightly armored, agility based character. I cannot take a whole lot of hits, especially guys with hammers and and all that. That that's crazy. Yeah, about this part of the playthrough, I got a little bit lost, I think. This is not the first time that I've gotten lost in a Skyrim dungeon. <laughs> I can tell you that much for sure. Um, I couldn't even tell you I couldn't even tell you where the secret entrance is. I know that there there's a way to do this, and uh, I did figure it out in the next episode. But um, this is about the end of the first episode, so stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going to release it next next couple days or so um thank you guys for watching thank you for being subscribed thank you for leaving me a comment liking this video all that fun stuff um i'm gonna have more skyrim stuff coming up i got plenty of footage to work off of thank you guys again stay tuned
may I serve you, Monsieur? Of course. 